Hey folks, um, this video is on writing news headlines. So just as a quick reminder, um, what news stories, stories really focus on are just information. Remember, we're cutting out all the fluff, all of the personal opinion, and just trying to get to the main ideas of what happened, um, who it happened to, why it happened, when it happened, where it happened, how it happened, all those five W's and the, the H. Um, and so we are, remember, we're guiding these by our news determinants. Um, those are the five criteria that we use to judge whether something is newsworthy or not. And it's written in the inver inverted pyramid style. And so if you don't remember what that is, that's where we're just going to organize our most important information first. So your first paragraph should be the most important information um, of the story that you're writing. Um, I should be able to read your first paragraph and really understand exactly what's going on and exactly what this article is about. Then as you continue, as you progress, you're just adding more and more details, more and more background information. Um, and eventually we're going to get to a point in the story where we could apply the SNP test, basically meaning that I could cut your article at any point after maybe the first three or four paragraphs and it would lose nothing. I would still be able to read that and understand all of the important essential information. So where titles come into this is we are kind of at the top of the inverted pyramid, right? The headline, even maybe more so than the lead that you write, could be the most important phrase or word or, or clause in your entire story. Um, because if you think about it, you need to be able to understand what's going on in the world by just reading the headlines. Um, if you think about how people consume news now, they're just like scrolling through their news feeds and reading the headlines. And if something sounds really interesting, then they'll click on that article. But I'd say 60 to 70% of all news articles just get their titles read um, when they're looked at. So some things to keep in mind is when we talk about headlines, somewhere in there, we must have a subject and a verb. And I'll give you two different ways that we can structure this headline. Um, and it also must capture the essence of the story. So basically, what is this story about? I need to be able to read the headline and understand, okay, here's what the rest of this article is going to be on. Um, so I'll give you some examples. So we can do just a headline um, article where I'd say, you know, Earn gives assembly speech to freshmen. That's the story, right? Principal Earn talked to the freshmen at their freshman assembly. I've got um, the who, I've got the what, I've got the where at least do we know as an assembly, um, we don't quite have the why um, or the how, but I cover most of my five W's. I've got a subject, Mr. Earn. I've got a verb, gives. That works. I could also do it this way, a welcoming address. Now that's good, it's eye-catching. Um, it's really gonna draw my reader into the story, but I'm missing the subject and the verb. I really don't know what this story is about aside from whatever a wel welcoming address means. Um, I would have to follow that headline up with a subheading. Seniors principal pumps up freshmen with assembly speech, right? Basically saying the same thing as up here, but I wanted to have this nice eye-catching headline. And since I don't have a subject and a verb in my headline, I've got to follow that up with a subject and verb in my subheading. So either one of these formats work for writing news articles or writing feature articles, but um, at some point, somewhere in that article, I need a subject and a verb, whether you decide to do just headline alone or headline and subheading. All right, good luck folks.